In today's video, we're going to be having a quick look at the Adaprox Fingerbot. I'll be sharing with you my thoughts and opinions on the device, and if you stick around till the end of the video, I'll be letting you know how you can get yourself a free one of these. Check it out. What's going on guys? I hope you're all doing well. As I said, we're going to be having a quick look at the Fingerbot. We're going to be running through the device's price, its functionality, my use case, the setup of the device, and then some pros and cons and a little summary of it. So if you couldn't tell, the Fingerbot is a tiny little robot with an interchangeable arm that can move up or down. The primary use for this little robot is to just press buttons. Now you might be thinking, why would I want a little robot that's just going to press buttons? And the answer for that is maybe you've got a couple of devices that don't have smart capabilities and you want to just be able to add that functionality to it. Or maybe you've got some kind of a device that's got a button on it and it's in an awkward to reach place. That would be where your little Fingerbot comes in handy. So why would you want one of these little IoT devices? Well, to start with, they're super cool. This tiny little robot that's got a little arm that's going to press buttons for you. Who doesn't want that? The motorized noise is really cool as well. So just pressing a button and hearing that noise or asking the Amazon Echo or Google to press a button and then you hear that little robot noise is really cool. At least I think it is anyway. The Fingerbot is created by a company called Adaprox. It originally started off on Kickstarter and was successfully funded. The idea of the robot is to just press buttons, but you can also connect it to voice assistants like Google Home, Amazon Alexa and Siri. The device utilizes the Tuya cloud, so you can also make use of the Tuya API to control the Fingerbot. One important thing to note is you can only make use of the voice assistants or the Tuya cloud if you additionally purchase the Adaprox Home Hub. In addition to this, you can control the device with other services like if this, then that. And you can also control it with both the Adaprox app and also the Tuya and Smart Life apps. The Fingerbot features an internal rechargeable battery that you can charge via USB-C. Next to the USB-C charging port is an on-off switch. There's also a status LED. The device connects to one of the mentioned apps via Bluetooth, and that's the only wireless protocol it features. You attach the device to a surface or another product by using 3M tape. Let's start off with the price of this thing. So if you were interested in buying one of these, it would set you back $29.99. If you were interested in the toolkit, which is going to give you access to a few of the interchangeable arms, that's going to set you back about another $10. And if you wanted to connect your Fingerbot to the cloud and to be able to make use of virtual assistants like Google Home, Amazon Alexa, then you're going to need to buy yourself one of the Fingerbot hubs. The Home Hub's going to set you back about another $40, but it will also allow you to connect any of the Adaprox products to that hub. And those prices were just if you bought the product directly from Adaprox. You can definitely pick up the Fingerbot a lot cheaper, so if you visit a site like AliExpress, you could find it on there much, much cheaper. The setup of the device is super simple. All you need to do is download the Adaprox app. Once you've got the app installed and you've set up an account, all you're going to need to do is just add a device. You're then going to just need to choose the Fingerbot from the list and it will do the rest for you. And once the Fingerbot's connected, you're done. From within the app, you can give your Fingerbot a name. So if you've got a few of them, that's going to come in handy. You can also view the Fingerbot's battery level. And as I said, it's got an internal rechargeable battery that you charge via USB-C. So with the Fingerbot, you've got a couple of different options. You've got two options for the mode. First of all, you've got click. With click, the Fingerbot's arm is going to move down for a set period of time before it retracts. That's going to simulate a click or a button press. With switch, the Fingerbot's arm will move either up or down and it will stay in that position until you click the switch again. The Adaprox app also features a scheduler. Within the scheduler, you can set a timer for a device. So after a set period of time, it's going to switch or click. And you can also set up a weekly schedule for when a device is going to turn on or off. My particular use for the Fingerbot is to turn on some wireless desktops that I have 
that don't support wake on wireless LAN. So as they don't support that feature, I could add a Fingerbot to the PC and then I could turn it on and off remotely. Another use that I've got for my Fingerbot is the coffee machine. So it's got a big reheat button on it and being able to trigger the Fingerbot and getting it to press that button will be super useful. So what are the pros and cons of the Fingerbot? We'll have a look at four of each and then I'll finish up with my summary of the device. And we'll start off with the pros. So to start with, I've gone for the form factor of the device. I really like the small form factor of this device and it genuinely looks quite cool. It's just a tiny little cube robot. Next up, I've gone for the interchangeable arm. Now this is a nice feature because you can change the arm to fit your use case. Adaprox also shared the STL file for the Fingerbot's arm so people can go and create their own Fingerbot arms and attachments. Next up, we've got Tuya. So this thing runs on the Tuya cloud service. Having it on the Tuya cloud means you can control it from anywhere in the world. You can also control it directly with the Tuya or Smart Life app. And there'll also be no subscription service for this. And my last pro for the device is that it utilizes USB-C. I really like that they opted to make use of USB-C and it also allows the device to charge really quickly. So that was my four pros. Now on to the cons. My first con then is the price. Now for me, and again, this is my own opinion, I think that the price point for the Fingerbot is set quite high. And for what it is and what it can do, I don't think it's worth that value. But as I showed you, you can pick it up from other sources online much cheaper. Next up is the device's strength. So this Fingerbot is actually quite weak. Any real force made against the finger is gonna cause the gear to just spin. And if it actually spins too much, it actually kind of moves out of place. So the actual arm then is not in alignment with the gears. And you'll know that you've done this because when the device arm moves up or down, it will stop at a set position, but the gear will just keep spinning and just make like a, a kind of crunching noise. You can fix that though. You kind of just have to grip the arm and tell the device to move whilst you're kind of holding it in place. Another con then, and again, it's my own opinion, is that there's no Zigbee for this device. A lot of small IoT devices like this have Zigbee, so I was quite surprised that it actually didn't. Now, I don't know if that's just a design choice or whether they just wanted to stick with just Bluetooth, but either way, it hasn't got it and it would be nice to just have it. So my last con then, which is kind of more of a gripe, is to do with the Adaprox app. So during my testing and playing around with the device, I ran into a few issues with the app. A few times, it would just refuse to send any of the commands to the device. So I'd say press a button or change a setting and it just wouldn't reflect on the Fingerbot. I also ran into it a few times where the device would just be unresponsive and not turn on. And for me, the app actually crashed a couple of times just playing around with it. So those were my pros and cons for the Adaprox Fingerbot. So would I recommend the Adaprox Fingerbot to you? Nah. It all boils down to your use case really. So for me, my solid use case is a couple of wireless desktops that I've got. And as I said, they don't make use of the Wacom wireless LAN. So having a small device that can just sit on that and press a button is very useful. There are a few other devices like this out there on the market at the moment, but this one's got the smallest form factor that I've seen. And again, for my use case, having it smaller is just nicer. And it's called the Fingerbot for a reason. So if you're buying it with the mindset of this is a small IoT device that can press light buttons, then you'll be good to go. But if you buy it with the mindset of I'm gonna get it to push and pull all these crazy things and press all these different switches, then you'll be quite surprised because it just doesn't have that strength. Another thing is if you're not planning on buying the Adaprox hub, you're gonna be limited to just the Bluetooth range of the device. So let me know in the comments below if you plan on getting a Fingerbot and what your use case is. And now onto the bit that you've been waiting for. How can you go about getting yourself one of these for free? So Tuya is currently running a competition which is aimed at getting people onto their IoT development platform. If you make use of the Tuya cloud or you've got the Tuya or Smart Life app with devices connected, then this will be a fun one for you to play around with. All you'll need to do is create an account, create a project, and then just play around with the API. I'll have a link to the competition in the description below. I also recently created a video on how to do this, and if you follow along with that video, you'll earn yourself a Fingerbot. In addition to the Fingerbot, there's also some $35 Amazon vouchers that you can earn for creating a cool project and uploading it to GitHub. And that's been the Adaprox Fingerbot. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to drop me a like. And if you're not already, if you hit that subscribe button and ding dong that notification bell, you'll be alerted to any future video that I do. Before I go, just a massive thank you to these awesome dudes. These awesome dudes are my patrons. If you're interested in supporting my channel and becoming one of these awesome dudes, there'll be a link for my Patreon in the description below.
So thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.